Hello, in this video we will understand about the celiac disease. So what is the celiac disease? In this video we will understand about the whole story. So celiac disease is a gluten allergy. So the gluten is a protein are present in the wheat basically. The celiac disease for short is a CED is a chronic immune mediated enteropathy uh, precipitated by to by dietary gluten in genetically predisposed individual those uh, genetically predisposed individual will be more uh, uh, sensitive and create the reaction will lead to uh, lead to gluten allergy reaction the gluten containing food products like wheat and dry and barley etc is the gramini family when we will uh, when uh, when the uh, when the sensitive person will uh, eat this food the reaction will begin the reaction is due to the genetic if let's begin to understand the genetic is the dendritic cell or macrophage cell containing a hla genes activation this hla genes activation due to the mutation or epigenetic will lead to produce the hla molecule uh, dq8 and 2 it is important when gluten will enter will lead to activate this molecule and the HLA plus gluten will lead to activation of T cell. When the T cell will be activated in this way the T cell when activate will lead to immune response and the chronic inflammation will occur. Let's understand about the pathophysiology. When gluten will enter into the stomach after the eating, in this way the stomach is here, duodenum and this pancreas, let's begin to understand from the bolus to the coim. This coim will enter into the duodenum, the, uh, the, uh, the gluten is the long polypeptide, will be uh, cut due to the human proteases enzyme, several type of enzyme, will lead to partially digestion of gluten, not completely, in the lumen. In the lumen of the small intestine, remember. So let's begin to understand the enterocytes, the lumen inside here is the small intestine. And in this way, in this way here you can see, this is enterocytes is here, which that is also known as the brush powder cell, which that's contain microvilli for increase the surface area for the absorption of the food. But in the celiac disease, this uh, microvilli will be damaged, will lead to decrease the surface area. In this way, the malabsorption of the food will occur. In this way, the many, many complications can be arise. This partially digested gluten will enter into the enterocyte directly or with the indirectly. And in this way, here is a microbiome, which that is also... Uh, as a barrier immunity will prevent this microbiome to entry into the lamina proporia inside. So the outside is the lumen of the enterocyte and the inside is the lamina proporia. This gluten will pass into the lamina proporia and the gluten basically uh, uh, digest through deamination by the uh, transglutaminase 2 enzyme, the tissue transglutaminase 2 enzyme will digest this to convert this uh, gliden from the gluten. This gliden is important for the toll-like receptor, the HLA molecule DK8 and 2 activation due to the disease relevant, which that will lead to uh, easy to bind with the HLA DK molecule with this gliden after the binding due to the genetic or epigenetic mutation will lead to antigen presenting cell or macrophage which that is activate and produce the interleukin 12 for the recruitment of the recruitment of the naive T cell the naive T cell recruit, recruitment will, per, uh, will interact and the uh, per, uh, proliferation into the T helper uh, for the CD 4 and the CD8 cytotoxic T cell and T helper cell. T helper cell is the major example is the T helper 1 cell remember. T helper 1 cell will interact with the naive B cell. But this is the T helper cell the CD4 T 
free helper cell will produce the interferon gamma, interleukin-21 and tumor necrotic factor alpha. This gluten-specific T cell response will occur. The response is the interferon gamma, interleukin-21 and tumor necrotic factor alpha will produce. This will lead to GIT lesion will occur. This GIT lesion will lead to more permeability of microbiome and this microbiome uh, I have a video, I will give the disc, uh, link in the descri dis description below. You can watch that video about the microbiome in, 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 uh, interaction due to the celiac disease. So the uh, uh, basically is the uh, inflammation will increase, will lead to intraepithelial leukocyte will be activated to enterocyte damage and in this the damaging of the enterocyte will lead to malabsorption of vitamin B12, fat and iron. And on the other hand the interleukin uh, intraepithelial leukocyte will also recruit due to the production of cytokines to recruit the B cell. And this B cell recruitment as well as the T cell recruitment. On the other hand, the CD, um, uh, CD4 also interact with the B cell, naive B cell to proliferate the B, mem B memory cell and plasma cell. This plasma cell will produce the, a lot of antibodies, is known as the anti gluten and anti, uh, anti transglutaminase 2 A antibodies which that is the transglutaminase 2 antibodies and remember both type of antibodies which basically will collapse the gluten and gliadin. In this way the gluten and gliadin will be uh, collapsed and the enterocyte will be damaged will lead to vitamin B12 deficiency and iron deficiency due to the less absorption of the iron due to the damaged epithelium will lead to cause anemia. This intraepithelial leukocyte will be transformed after the inflammation will produce a natural killer like cell will kill the enterocyte more which that is infected as well as the apoptosis will occur and in this way the interleukin 15 interleukin 15 basically also produced due to the damaged enterocyte this interleukin is basically important for the for the several function like also again triggering of the intraepithelial leukocyte to more kill the epithelial cell and in this way the uh, cell injury and hyperplasia will be occur on the other hand the damage of the epithelial cell basically will uh, increase the permeability for the in uh, for the movement of microbiome inside as well as other problem like um, the gluten will move inside and other things so the gluten peptides and the pathogen and commensals which that will also infect the epithelial cell to trigger more intraepithelial leukocyte while on the other hand the intra interleukin 15 also inhibit the t regulatory cell because the inflammation is continue this continuing inflammation requires the inhibition of the t regulatory cell so in this way the t regulatory cell is important for the interleukin 10 and transforming growth factor beta uh, produce but it will not produce so remember the no response to uh, inhibit the dendritic cell so the antigen presenting cell will not inhibit due to the t regulatory cell for inhibition of inflammation in this way the continuous continue chronic inflammation will occur this chronic inflammation will lead to damage the epithelial cell the microvilli damage will lead to malabsorption of food this is the stomach and this is the basically the transverse colon and uh, ascending and descending large intestine and small intestine which that is also infected the large intestine and small intestine and duodenum. So in this way the infected area where the infection will occur the lining of small intestine will be affected and in this way the cell injury and hyperplasia will be occur. In this way the cell injury will occur and hyperplasia and the villus atrophy will occur. The villus atrophy, the damage will lie. The celiac disease will occur and enteropathy. Enteropathy will occur and in this way the celiac disease will progress. In this way the crypt 
like structure will increase and the normal will die you can see in this diagram a uh, normal will die containing cells anyhow by, by, by this the diagnosis can be done by small intestine biopsy and the villus atrophy and crypt hyperplasia of uh, visualization and intraepithelial lymphocytosis if the intraepithelial lymphocytosis will occur in this way the intraepithelial uh, lymphocyte activation to kill that epithelial cell and damage the epithelial cell and inflammation will occur presence of the celiac disease antibodies to tissue transglutaminase uh, 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 deamination and gliadin peptides So the a, a clinical presentation is a chronic fatigue and the dermatitis, the uh, herpiformis, the, uh, the skin will uh, produce a reddish color. Uh, uh, on the other hand, the nutrient deficiency like vitamin B12 deficiency and the iron deficiency. And on the other hand, the fat deficiency and in this way the uh, poor growth will occur and short stature and anemia due to the iron deficiency, due to the less absorption of iron and poor growth and the bone, uh, bone density will be decreased due to the calcium less absorption, overall ulcer and liver and the biliary disease. Risk factor is autoimmune disease 60.4%, 16.4% for normal, 5.3% population uh, is uh, general. Autoimmune disease uh, uh, more uh, sensitive. On the other hand, the Hashimoto's uh, thyroiditis and the Graves disease, type 1 diabetes and sex, age, geographical location with the pre, uh, predisposition HLA uh, haplotype in the general population as well as the epigenetic mutation and genetic antibiotics as well as infection, diet, changes of microbiome in GIT. So this is the video was about the celiac disease. This video was about the celiac disease, the gluten allergy. Uh, for short and this is the pathophysiology thanks for watching see you in the next video bye